Hello, I have something cool to share, and uh, it's about AI and LLMs. And um, we have, of course, support in Apex, um, but I have something that actually goes further. So first, um, here I have like a small block. I have like a small result variable called ucai.generateText. Pass the user prompt, a system prompt, what's the email address of Jim. Um, system prompt, you're an assistant to a chime tracking system, your tools give you access, blah, blah, blah. Um, I run it and yeah, it comes back with, I don't have access to personal user information. But wouldn't it be cool if it has? So of course I could um, like add like some context data, always add like the, the user data into the system prompt or something that would be able to help. As I have like here this, this table with data, Jim is actually in there, but there's something different and it's called tools. So let's take a look at that. So what I have in my database, I have a function um, that's called get all users JSON. It says return clop is and then it just queries the data as JSON and returns it. So it's important that it returns a clop because LLMs speak text like just un they, they of course can read JSON but they don't have structured data types so you return also clop, clop here um, and then I have this UCAI tools table so I, I create a new one give it a code, get users, get information on all the users in the system, some more description, it's active version one, and I have a function call here. So return, and I have this action in package, so my package dot um, get all users JSON. Insert it, commit it, and just run it again. And I get back, Jim's email address is jimhalpert at dundamifflin.com. Okay, yeah, already cool. But the, 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 the cool thing about this is like the AI decides to use um, these functions or not to. You just tell them you have the capability you, to use these and it decides for themselves if they want to use it. So like um, if you don't ask about Jim, something different, it won't call it. You won't pay for the extra context. And if you like want to add like 10 or 20 or 50 of these functions, then it just calls them when they need them. A little bit more detail what's going on. So this is documentation. So here again, what's the email address, same example. And here is actually the conversation flow. So first like system message, user message, what is the email. Then it comes back with a tool call. That's how it calls. It wants to call the get user function. Then what my package, the UCI package does, it actually executes the function returns the response here, the JSON, back to the AI. The AI will evaluate it and come back with the last response. And uh, that's pretty mighty. But let's go a step further. So um, let's compose different functions. So in the next example, I want to write data, basically. This is a time tracking system. So users can clock in in the morning. They also need to give like a project I work on this project uh, and they can give, for example, uh, like notes to basically give some um, insights, like what are they doing? So for this case, I actually don't define one tool. I define three tools. First, like get users. It can look up if the user, which ID it has, for example, like we used before. Then the projects, like for a chat application, the user might say something like the marketing project, but it's not actually called the marketing project or like he doesn't give the ID. But then the AI can look up the projects, get the ID or the correct name and then use it. Or if like if it's not really a good information, if it can't find one, he can stop there and say, oh, I don't find this one. Uh, do you actually mean this or this? And ask for input. Um, and at last we have the clock in function here that actually receive parameters of the user, the project and the node, and then actually write some data. So let's see how that works. What I have here, I have another tool for the get projects, simple, same as the one before, just a different function here. And then I have the third one, um, this is a clock in, uh, here I need to have an ID, 
and its description clock in a user to the time tracking system. This needs a user email project name. As parameters, you can get these from the other tools, optionally pass notes if given by the user. And then there's like some example parameters and then I all, like, teach it that it can use a JSON, user example, project name, notes, or like one without a note. Okay, but also what I do, um, it actually you can also provide a JSON schema for the parameters, that's even better. Um, so I also insert into these parameters. I first like to do a JSON object, type object, and in it, so this reference, this parent, I have like the string of user email with the description, the string project name with the description, and at last a string notes and I say it's optional because this is a zero here. Again, this is all documented documented here. Let's run this actually. So boom. Now it's like talking to the AI. It can take a few seconds. And response, you are already clocked into a project. And that's the thing, like this function, the last one, it doesn't raise an exception. It returns, like it does a check, are you already clocked in? And then returns like error, you're already clocked in as text. Because this is a valuable context to the AI, right? It can come back to you and say, yeah, give this nice message. Um, so how do we fix it? Let's for now like delete these entries. So um, what I also didn't say, the current user is Michael Scott I put in here um, in the system prompt. Um, so the AI knows who's that current user. So delete from things, three doors deleted, good. So let's run this all again. And now it, he should be able to be clocked in. You are now clocked into the project marketing campaign with the note meeting. And as I said here, please clock me into the marketing project. So it actually like uses the projects, but like we can debug it even more. So let's debug the whole JSON and let's see actually what's in here. So first some usage information, like how many tokens does it actually take here? Um, that's coming from OpenAI. How many tools were count, uh, used for in this case? And here's the message history, which is nice. So system user, then it first comes with the first function call, clock in. It first tries to really clock in with michael at gmail.com with the marketing project. Sometimes AI is also not that smart, but here it gets an error. User with email not found or inactive. Okay, so it gets a text as a insight. Okay, then it decides, okay, the user does not exist. Let's call the get users tool. It gets back the users. Then it first checks the projects. It could have maybe done again the check and notice that the project doesn't exist, but now it got the projects. Now it has all the information to call clock in with the right information with Michael Scott at Dunder Mifflin and the right project name. And then it got users successfully clocked in. And then it comes back with the message I, t I teach it basically I said here. Also like, if you are cl clock somebody in answer with you are not clocked into project, project name with the node node. Okay. And now the cherry on top is like, okay, here you can see I pass some additional info provider, um, C provider, OpenAI. I'm actually more of an anthropic fan, like the Claude model. So what happens if we do this and then model? And you can see in the UCAI anthropic packages, which models. So let's take the small one, the Haiku. Claude is exceptional also with tool calling. Um, so maybe it's doing less tool calls here. I need to change this to anthropic. And same thing, you are now clocked in. Let's take a look at the JSON. So here we have actually one tool count less. So it first really starts with the get user, then um, with the get projects, then clocks in. So it doesn't first try want to clock in. And that's the magic of the UCI package. Basically, I want to make it super easy to give access to PLSQL and Oracle developers to AI. So I heard a lot of things like Python is the best um, for AI development or JavaScript is better. And um, that's currently true, but I think it's not, the issue is not basically that the programming language Python is better for AI per se. No, it's actually the frameworks, the toolings around it is, makes it so easy. Also, 23AI has great support for, for things like these. 
but it's for example cloud only currently so many users actually don't yeah have access to that this is just psql you can use it on 12.2 probably I, I'm not, I haven't tested it but i think you should be or 19c additionally like yeah apex also has like uh, support like this um with um calling models but like it's limited on the vendors of the ai so for for over a year now we are stuck with openai and coherer and I'm not sure even what the third one was, but like Anthropic, um, it's a really big player. And even Google is really good now. And the idea of this is basically it's a pluggable system. So you can always extend one. What I didn't show you, I also have support for Google with the Gemini models. And I plan to extend it even more for like maybe Grog, maybe like Olama for local LLMs. The thing is like, this is just like, yeah, each implementation, they all do similar things. I just want to unify it with one API you can use. So this is open source. You can um, see it on GitHub, uh, see the code, install it. I have like this documentation with some installation guides. You need to, of course, provide your own API keys. I also have like some plans for it. So for example, some reasoning settings for reasoning models. I will work on stream text. Other frameworks or other programming languages often use the streaming methods where it just comes back word after word. As you see from, from like ChatGPT, it streams back the answers. We can do that from the database too. I already have, an, we have already implemented an apex.world. I just want to need, need to support that here. And then I will soon provide an Apex app to configure the tools. Currently, it's these you have to do these inserts. It's not that convenient. And I'm working on an Apex plugin to really make it plug and play from add a chat here, system prompt thing. I want to use these tools and boom, you have an AI assistant in your app that can utilize all these things. If you are interested, please um, contribute to it like you can do any of these if you you can just go through the code and maybe see a way to optimize it please feel free to make a pull request or to open a discussion to ask something i will i'm really happy to see this grow and um, i think yeah this can um, empower us as an oracle bubble and community to take part in the ai revolution yeah a little bit too excited here maybe Thank you very much for tuning in. We also do like consulting with United Code, so I have a lot of products. Um, if you have any questions, reach out to me and see you in the next video. Bye bye.